It is time once again for the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament. Let's review where we are at. So most of the people are currently, well, everyone's downtown currently. Most of the people are in the curio shop. A few people are not. Let's talk about the people who are not. Get them out of the way. So currently on the roof of the building is a uh, nearby building to the curio shop is Stubby and Danimal. Danimal just made a doll. Stubby ran up there to find him. Probably, who knows why, you can maybe guess for yourself. Um, both Weasel and Junior are just kind of in a nebulous location downtown. They haven't really specified. Junior finished shopping. Weasel um, made a phone call. It doesn't really matter where they are for that. Um, although, since they didn't specify, they can't really say they're interfering with something on someone else's turn. Um, Smiley and Ka are both downstairs in the curio shop with Little Red. Um, yeah, in the, in the main room. Kat actually didn't really specify where she went. She just said she threw the gas canister upstairs, so I think she's in the back room, actually. So she's in the back room. Smiley and uh, Little Red are in the main room. Junior is in a generic location. Flush is upstairs in the curio shop, um, along with Snugbug's dead body. Snugbug's going to have to roll his, um, his very second mundane this time on the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. With all the gunfire and police getting killed and whatnot, uh, the the downtown has a new trait, and that is SWAT. Um, it's an emergency thing for the city. There's some sort of perhaps terrorist activity or um, odd heist going on inside the curio shop. Um, there's been a lot of gunfire, and pe people are scared. They don't know what's going on. They're actually more intrigued because they feel like since they're not in the curio shop, they're probably not in danger, but it seems like a, a very, like, interesting thing that's happening in their world for real um, and that they can semi-witness it via eyewitness news. Um, they, they feel like they're almost like a part of it or like it's something that's happening to them only they're totally safe so it's kind of great. So Smiley, um, keep in mind she looks like Smiley. She's gonna write on a piece of paper. She does have paper. She she already got that. A notebook and a pen. Uh, help! The Pipe smoking proprietor has harmed me in here, and he's going to harm me again. I need you to help me right now on a piece of paper and put it up to the window of uh, the curio shop, hoping that the SWAT will bust in. And she's actually not, she's saying that they will bust in when they see that, because here is someone saying that they need immediate assistance. Um, Little Red says no. <laughs> um, Ka? Hmm. She doesn't know. I'm going to have to think about how everyone votes, but Little Red will definitely say no to that. Um, and then we'll, we'll go through everyone else. All right, the SWAT do bust in. Junior, he doesn't know what to do about that, so he's going to just delay his turn, and that's going to bring us to Ka. Now, I want to say something. Um, each of these people has could probably come up with a pretty good idea as to what someone else's secret goal is since they all wrote the secret goals for each other and, you know, mixed them up and distributed them. Ka thinks she knows what Little Red's secret goal is. She's not sure, but she thinks she knows. She's also in the same place as him. So she could be positioned to try to stop him right now. Uh, the SWAT's just busted into the room. Um, Little Red has the head. And they're saying, down on the ground. And Ka is in the, the, the room behind, kind of aware of what's going on, looking kind of crazy with a gas mask. I mean, generally, if, you, if you're wearing a gas mask and it's not like some sort of apocalyptic situation or you're not a firefighter or um, I don't know who else would wear a gas mask, maybe a scientist, um, you look a little crazy, a full, a full face gas mask. I mean, if you have one of those things that keeps you from getting bird flu, I, I guess that doesn't look super crazy, I guess, because a lot of people are wearing those, um, but they seem uncomfortable to me. So you look uncomfortable. I, I'd rather be crazy than uncomfortable. Setting her baby down with her gas mask, Kaz gonna uh, poke her head into the room, uh, the main room, remember she's in the back room, VIP room, and yell, SWAT team, the pipe smoking proprietor, he's about to ignite a bomb. Shoot him. 
and she says that that makes them shoot him. Uh, it's a little fuzzy there. I'm gonna have to. It's kind of every every time someone does something, I have to kind of think about uh, who finds it feasible or not. Um, you know the drill. So I'm gonna do that now, off camera. Little Red's out. I'll, I'll actually gonna conflict with this too. Um, he's gonna say. What? No, they're crazy. And he's on the ground with his, his hands over his head. Um, so he feels like they probably won't shoot him. Um, that's going to change people's calculus if he were to be like making furtive movements. He's not. Um, I think the group's going to go in his favor on that. So we'll roll some dice. Uh, he gets four, three, four, five, and six. And she gets ones and twos. So things work out for Little Red there. So Little Red dictates how the cops now have their guns trained on Cab because uh, she looks kind of crazy um, and they hear the baby crying in the next room with the gas mask. Uh, Flesh is going to walk down the stairs. Remember, he's an invincible tank right now. And um, he rationalizes since Little Red has his hands on his head, he's not holding onto the head. He's going to pick up the head and just walk away. Um, where is he going to walk? i got to remember what his goal is. But they can shoot him all at once. They can't really do anything to him. Um, so yeah, so he's got his mannequin, he's got his head, and he is going to uh, go to, um, I guess, picking it up and walking out. Is that an, a full action? It's kind of fuzzy, you know, what is considered to be one thing. I guess he's got to go down. I mean, it's a free action to move, right? But is, act, is picking up an item, like, is that really such a, a, a long thing? He wants to pick it up and then uh, move again, I suppose. Um, he wants to go to a, a discotheque, but they're all closed. He's going to go across the street to the cafe and sit down. Now, here things are going to get a little bit interpretive, and uh, maybe you can help me. Nope, you can't help me. I, um, I was it since I one of the benefits of not holding a camera is you can uh, take time to read things. So I was able to read Flush's goal again. He doesn't. He's he's going to walk out with the head, but he's going to um, uh, as his action jam it onto the mannequin. So the head's on the mannequin right now, and Flush is say he's running away, I guess. Well, I think enough of an action would be putting the head on the mannequin. So now Snugbug's got to be a new person. We'll roll for his new mundane. We got 25 there. And let's see what that is. Snugbug gets to be a mobster, and I think he's probably the body bouncer's family member. I think that makes sense. He doesn't need to debate about whether or not he has a gun, which is really nice for Snugbug, because Snugbug likes to have a gun. It's right there, concealed weapon, and I think it's reasonable to say that that could be a gun. There we go, new Snugbug. Let's see what he does with his new mobster powers. Snugbug is going to call his lieutenants and have them um, be on the lookout for that head and try to get it from him by any means necessary. Pretty simple choice. Mobster wants something ASAP. Uh, now Little Red. Little Red. Oh, Little Red. Little Red is going to convince the police that, um, that that head was valuable property of his that was stolen. Uh, I think the police are going to buy it. I think other people would have a hard time arguing that. Um, so they're going to try to get it for him, too. So we have the mob going after the head and the police going after the head. Both are also going after Flush. Especially the police. The police do, are not happy with Flush. He already stole a mannequin. Now he stole a head, and he's killed several people. The animal's in a tough place. He could stop Flush right now uh, just by using a doll, but he's got Stubby up there on the roof with him, and he's a little bit scared of that. However, movement is a free action, so I think he will move off of the roof uh, down into the kind of the populated area where people are. You figure that's going to make him a little more safe than being on a roof with Stubby. And he's going to reveal that he's the Reaper, poke one of his dolls in the head, and Flush's tank is dead. 
So I guess he falls dead right outside the um, right outside the uh, uh, the curio shop, and there's a mannequin with a head uh, poked onto it, sitting there in the street. Um, maybe the police would pick it up right now. I don't know. I'll have to have a little discussion. Stubby had hoped to learn the soul reap ability from the animal when he. Uh, did the poking of the doll, but that didn't work out because Danimal moved away before he did the soul reap. So instead, Stubby's gonna go down and he's gonna reveal that he's the mimic and that he learned gladiator stuff from the stadium. Uh, Flush is gonna confirm that indeed he did. And he's gonna use the pipe that he has to kill Danimal uh, with a pipe. Um, Danimal is gonna suggest kind of lamely that the chaos in downtown Makes it so that that doesn't happen, but he can't really think of anything to stop him that's that convincing. So he kind of just kind of peters out, and everyone else is like, okay, you're gone. And they would, you know, people are probably not going to vote for the Reaper anyway, except for maybe Weasel, Flush, and Snugbug, right? Because those are the ones, if, the, if they're playing just purely strategically, those are the ones that don't have their powers left. And I guess Little Red, too, so they might actually vote in favor, because we got one, two, three, four, with who are immune to the Reaper's abilities, um, but three that are not. But still, he it just, Stubby had too, too convincing of a case there. All right, let's move on to Weasel, who I thought he, he might have had something like this. He was, he, he arranged for some selling. Uh, he's just kind of in a generic location, but the head is sitting on the ground. Does he try to take it? Weasel is going to try to pick it up in the chaos. Um, Little Red's going to oppose him, saying that the police are on the scene, there's enough police presence, and they're looking for the head that they are going to, you know, spy. And it's not like the head is particularly hidden. It's on a mannequin next to Flush's dead body. He just walked out of this curio shop, which the police, you know, were, had their guns trained on, were probably shooting him, and then he drops dead. Um, they're not going to probably miss something like that. So we're going to go... Dominant in Little Red's favor on this. Um, and so we'll give Weasel one. Little Red gets the rest. And he got two ones. That's pretty good. But that wasn't enough. If he had convinced like one more person, whew, that might have worked out. Maybe I should have spent more time thinking about that. Maybe I should. I'm going to break it down and see who went for what and then actually work this up. But we're going to keep the same die roll. Um, I just kind of th thought what the majority would go for. Um, and I think they would. the majority would go for a little red. But would someone be kind of skeezy about it? Probably not. Let's think. Stubby. Hmm. Okay, I think, you know, just one person had to vote for Weasel's idea, and I think he did get that vote. Um, maybe it was just one vote, but, or an abstention, but he did get it. So, this uncanny roll uh, made it so that he does have the head now, and he has it hidden, but... I don't, I don't know what good that's really going to do him, because it's not like other people don't know that he has the head, but... Yeah. I mean, he's not hidden. He just has the head hidden, like, in his flight jacket or something. Um, so that's going to be tough with the mannequin. I don't think he really has it hidden. Um, unless he had a car. Probably has a car. I mean... Yeah, maybe there's a reality check on the hidden, so he has to kind of come up with how he has it hidden. All right, so he's got he's got his flight jacket around the shoulders of the mannequin, and his uh, his pilot hat on the head's head, um, and he's kind of like leaning away from the scene like it's a traumatized friend, um, and that's how he has it hidden. No one feels like arguing anymore. Okay, that'll work. We'll see what happens next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament Power Play.